And in terms of scoping, we have started scoping the quiz project for the next release. So we gather all the previous work done by Sasha and Mick. Thanks a lot for Mick for helping us to gather all the information that we have. Also, we want to thank Helen for helping us and sharing a great analysis of the current situation with the quiz and the prototype that we have. And then we started to define the next UX steps to be able to scope the project on the planning week. Also, we create a, a scope document that any one of you can review after the, the meeting. So the links are there. Next one. The same with the bulk editing course activities for the next release. So we gather the previous work done for Barbie and the technical ideas came from Ferran. We have a lot of several internal meetings to understand the scope and we define in next steps, not only the UX steps, you know, technical depth that we think that we need to be able to, to fix before be able to complete this, this project. Next slide. And finally, we are scoping the FFP improvement. For us, there are these four issues that we think that is going to reduce the gap that we have in the community to be able to decide if he's going to use FFP in Moodle as it is, or it's going to install the, the plugin from Jovel. So we think that with these four issues, we have a complete FFP core experience. So the idea is to, to, to work on that to the next release. And the next one, so also we are working for several issues for required UX, UX work. And this time for Sabina, our brilliant UX designer that is going to, to share with you more details about this issue. So Sabina, over to you. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, hi, everyone. So yeah, I'm gonna give you a small overview of what I've been working on in the past uh, few weeks. Uh, so next slide, please, Adrian. Yeah, so the first uh, issue that I've been working on is about reconsidering the activity type label on the course page. So we have many feedback from teachers and content creators about this uh, activity label not being useful uh, for learners, uh, being confusing and misleading, and also being uh, not as I said, not flexible for them in order to communicate what they intended with the activity. We know that teachers use the uh, each particular activity for many different things, so they want to have a little bit more uh, flexibility and freedom on this. So, as we already have many feedback from from teachers uh, and content creators. I would like to get feedback from the other user group affected by this um, topic, which is the students. And I'm aiming to recruit uh, at least five students uh, to present them with the design options that I've been working on, and also gather their feedback and feelings about the this uh, label being displayed. Um, I've been posting some entries on the on some forums of the community to get uh, some help from, from the community out there to recruit learners. And I'm already talking with two people that will be helping me to recruit some learner, uh, learners, and hopefully I will get to these uh, at least five users that I need for the testing. So based on, on the results of these interviews and testings, and also considering the, the feedback already provided from, from teachers, I will be iterating on the design solution proposal and trying to uh, create the best experience for both uh, teachers, content creators, and students' uh, user groups. So, um, yeah, this process is being a little bit slow because it's hard to get uh, learners uh, for testing purposes. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm getting there. So, Adrian, if you can move to the next slide, please. Uh, another issue that I've been working on is about improving the links to Moodle.org and Moodle Academy. So um, uh, I've been proposing um, uh, having these links into the uh, My Courses page. Um, and this is a, an image and a screenshot of when a admin or teacher content creator will log into the Moodle account for the first time. 
they will see the sales state uh, page in my course section in which they will have uh, some useful links for the documentation website and also Moodle Academy here. And um, I've been working here closely with Julia from the PX team in order to improve the copy presented there. And it will be, this, this issue will be ready in the upcoming uh, week. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the third issue that I was working on is about adding external participants to Big Blue Boots on calls. Uh, and I've been working especially with Laurent on this issue. Um, and what I've been adding uh, to improve the, the experience and, and work on this issue is some uh, settings um, in the uh, Big Blue Boots on activity. Um, you, I don't know if you can see here because it's a little bit small, but on the right side you can see a bigger image of the settings that will be basically to copy the meeting link and the meeting password and, and then uh, being able to send the link and the password um, to any external participant that they want to add in the calls. So these uh, um, settings are obviously for the admin or the uh, editing teacher role. Um, and if you move to the next slide, Adrian, I'll show you how it looks uh, once the activity is created. So as you can see on the left, we have a small button to add guests to the um, call and um, uh, the other uh, two call to actions to join the, the session and also to finish the session or end the session. So once the user will click in add, e add guest, they will see this pop-up that you see on the right where they can uh, again copy the link to the meeting and copy the password and send it to the external participants. The future um, ideas for this e issue is to add another input field uh, in these um, uh, settings in which uh, admin users will be able to input uh, any email uh, from the external guests they want to add into the call. And uh, they will be able to automatically send this email to the, to the user so they don't have to copy the link and send it manually through email. So that's the future uh, ideas for, for this uh, issue. And I think that's it for me. 